Okay, everybody, we're making another video real quick. Uh, I'm just going to illustrate this little mod that I'm doing uh, so that I can use two battery packs. Um, and I'm also going to just do a very quick, very brief uh, soldering tutorial um, just to show you guys that it is pretty uh, simple, pretty straightforward. Um, if you then are going to go out and buy your own soldering iron, I would just recommend you surf YouTube a little bit, look at some of the instructional videos for soldering uh, to get yourselves um, even more familiar. So what I'm trying to do right now is attach two battery leads to the frame plate. And I've said in the other videos, if you look at this thing in bright light, you can see the outline of where the copper is sitting on top of the underlying uh, frame plate. So what I've done, I, I did the positive side just to test my, my um, idea before I made a video, obviously. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm putting two battery leads and then they're going to spread out so there's one battery over here and one over here. And I've just attached a long piece of wire, um, both ends in the same spot. I'll cut it to length uh, at some point during the build. But um, here's what I did. I started out, I masked off a little area and um, I'm using a razor blade that's been a little bit modified so that I can lay it flat. I can lay that little bit of edge flat and just scrape away at the uh, paint, the covering of the material. So you'll see pretty quickly as the paint wears away that there's copper underneath. And that copper is the surface that we're going to um, that we're going to uh, solder to. So I'll just scratch this stuff away. And with each little pass, some of the paint goes away. And this technique was actually introduced to us by multirotorforums.com member uh, Mombasa Flash. He did this with a microcopter uh, power distribution board so that he could attach a second set of battery wires. He scraped the paint away, uh, soldered to the bare copper, and I've been doing it to my power distribution boards ever since. I like having two batteries for the extra flight time as well as a little bit of redundancy in case one battery cooks a cell or if a cell just drops out as I've seen a couple of times. Uh, not everybody has to do this. If you're just getting started with this stuff and you've never done these kinds of projects, I wouldn't really recommend it, but some people might want to and some people might look at my build later on and say, well, why does he have two battery packs? How do you attach them? Here's how. I'm going to stop the video here for a second. I'm going to finish scraping this away and I'll be right back. We're back. Uh, as you can see, I've taken the tape off of the bottom of the frame plate and uh, the tape was just used as a guide for me while I was scraping with the razor blade. Um, but the paint's gone. You can see the bright copper underneath. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tin that area. We're just going to put a layer of solder over the top of that copper. And when you're soldering, you want to heat the area that the solder is being stuck to. And you want to try to melt the solder onto the material, not onto the tip. You can cheat a little bit and put a little solder underneath the tip of the soldering iron and that helps to transfer the heat. But you really don't want to just get in the habit of forcing the solder onto the material by um, melting it on the soldering iron instead of the underlying material. So you'll see the copper is taking the solder really well. I'm going to put just enough down to make a little little mound on that spot. Okay, and that's it. When you heat the solder, when you first heat the solder, it melts. And then a second later, if you look really closely, you could see a little boiling. And that's the uh, flux within the solder boiling out and bringing any impurities to the surface. So. A little bit of a pause after you dab the solder in uh, finishes the process. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that a little bit. I actually turn it like this. And I'm going to be mumbling a little bit here. My black wires, 
the bottom of the bottom plate is the negative so the two black wires are going to go there like that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch them together at the wire at the tips and these tips have already been tinned what that means is I've heated them up and I've put some solder on them so uh, when I put them down and I heat them with the soldering iron uh, because they've already been saturated, just the tips, you, you want to try not to let solder flow up underneath the insulation, but the tips have been tinned, so they've already been saturated with solder. So I'm going to put them into position. When I heat them up, they're going to melt. The solder in the wire is going to melt, and it's going to flow into the underlying uh, pad that we have here. At the same time, I'm going to hold a little extra solder with my teeth, and I'm just going to dab it into place You'll hear me mumbling as I try in vain to talk while doing this. And also I'm using a hemostat, which is just a surgical clamp. You can get these anywhere, a Harbor Freight. So I'm going to pinch the wires together to keep them close with one hand. My hands are dirty. Uh, I'm going to pinch these together, right, and then grab them with the hemostat and that's going to hold them close enough that I'll be able to solder them into place. So there they are. You can see the tips melting. Now if I do nothing else, as the heat continues to flow into this, the solder on the <laughs> the solder on the frame plate. So the tips are going to melt first, right? Because the soldering iron is right up against them. And then the solder underneath that we put on the frame plate in that little pad, that's going to melt. Okay, so let's get it all set up. And because everything has been tinned in advance, in advance, I could just stop right there. Because there was solder on the wires, solder on the pad, I heated it all up and it all melted together. But when I add a little extra solder during the process, I'm also adding a little flux. And that extra flux is going to help keep everything clean. It's going to help the solder flow. So I'm just going to pull this out of view for a second and finish up. because. I can't leave my head out in front of the camera to do this. Okay, and when I do this, I don't want a huge glob of solder over the entire thing. Uh, what I shoot for is just a little bit of a, a fillet from the wire down into the pad. Okay, and, I, and I'd like to know that the wire is saturated, that the top of the wire bundle that's all twisted together um, that I'm soldering, I'd like to know that it's not only partially tin, that it's not, that there isn't, um, let's see. You know, I like to know that the wire is wet with solder all the way through. Okay, and that means the wire is solid there. So, you can see it's kind of flexible all the way down to the joint. Two wires will come off in one direction, two in the other direction, and that is my, uh, those are my battery connections. Now, these spots have already been tinned because the person that I bought this from assembled it. And what I'm going to do real quick is just throw one ESC on. I've already cut the wires to the length that I want and again I'm just going to start by tinning. I'm going to put a little solder on there. Do this one. Hold it for a second. Okay. Now when I say tinning the wires, I'll show you what I mean. I just clean the tip of the soldering iron. You should be doing that throughout the process. So you're just going to heat up the bare wire put a little bit of solder there 
and then just let it flow into the wire. So that's one. Here's the other one. And you see I'm not using jigs for every single step. I'm not wasting a lot of time clamping things and holding things. Sometimes what I'll do if I need to do this and it's moving around, I might put a battery on top of it. I like to use pliers with an elastic band so I can use any pair of pliers like a clamp to hold a, dare I say, a Dean's plug <laughs> or, <laughs> or something else. All right, I use my hemostats. You know, the silicon wire is very temperature, um, you know, it's very tolerant of uh, temperature. So you can hold the insulation gently with a hemostat or a clamp and it doesn't smash the insulation. If you find that you have something that has uh, plastic insulation on it, it will crush the, uh, the insulation. How people soldered and assembled stuff that was all made with, um, that was all made with uh, plastic insulation is beyond me. It must have been crazy trying to solder it because the plastic just melts and falls off the wire. But anyway, I'm um, just going to tin this a little more. Okay, and one more thing you can do, let me just get this. I mentioned in the first video the uh, rosin flux pen. So what you can do with this is just put a little bit of extra flux on the spot that you're about to solder because that flux boils out each time you heat up the solder and when there's no flux left um, the, the dirt won't be inclined to come up out of the joint and let me just zoom in a little bit here for this put that right there okay so what will happen is the dirt won't come up out of the joint the solder gets clumpy and I'm just going to hold this with my bare hands because it's going to happen very quickly. Alright, so I just give it an extra second to boil out and that wire is attached. Put a little more solder on this one. Okay. Push it down. The wire melts first, the solder on the pad melts second, you hold it in place. Usually when I blow on it to cool off it's because my finger's burning. Um, and you'll see I brought the wires in in like a V shape because as I said in the last video I'm going to twist this once maybe twice and it's going to come together more nicely if the wires are brought in to the middle already the way they're coming off the pads. All right. So that's a quick soldering tutorial. Um, my soldering iron is set from anywhere uh, from around 700 up to around 800, depending on what I'm doing for this. I have it set to 750. Uh, when, you're when you're soldering in closer to electronics, you want to keep it lower, and you want to be real careful about not overheating where you put the soldering iron, because you can mess up all your electronics. So that's it. That's video number four. Uh, the next time I check in, I will probably have all my motors connected. Um, my ESC is connected and we're going to start talking about uh, setting up the flight control. So we're going to take a big jump in the next video. Go ahead and have a whack at this stuff if you've got all of your equipment, if you've got your, your parts and kit and stuff at home, um, get to work. Alright, and if you have questions, ask in the thread as always. Thanks for watching.